Hey everybody, I'm making this pot of coffee right now. And by the time I come back and it's finished brewing, I'm gonna have a full website deployed on production. So let's get it. All right guys, I'm on my computer and I'm gonna create my new app. Boom. That went for CSS, Ruby on Rails for the server. I'm going to try to do this really quick because I have a coffee pot over there brewing coffee and I want to get this done as soon as possible. Try to speed run through this app development. All right, so installing, we got Tailwind. Now that the app is installed, the CD app. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a home page. Browse the controller pages home. And I'm going to edit the big routes. I'm going to set the root of the app. Set the pages home, and we can open the code in VS Code real quick. And I'll start the server, go and check if the app is working. Go into localhost 3000. As we can see, the app is running, so everything's set up in the code. Go to app view layouts application. I'm going to remove this main container because it adds this padding that I don't really like. When I reload, everything's going to get pushed up to the top left corner. That doesn't matter because I'm not even going to use that text anyways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look up Tailwind CSS Components 3. And a website that I really like is Hyper UI because they have so many components and they write it in a way that you can combine multiple components. Here. So what I'll do is I'll get a call to action. The only bad thing is there's like so much. I guess it's not a bad thing, but I'm going to grab one of these. Uh, let's go with this one. I'll copy HTML, come back into my code. I'm going to go to the page home, drop that in. And as you can see, it's a section, which means I can put another section right below it. Let's do testimonials, like this one. That's, as you can see, these are all free. This is beautiful. Shout out to whoever made this, whoever worked on this project. I love it because, as you can see, as soon as I reload, we have a full landing page that looks beautiful. And if we even wanted to add in user accounts, I'm fine with doing that for this video for speed running. So what we're going to do is we're going to bundle add device. That's so we have the device gem. I'm going to do a Rails G device colon install. I'm going to set up everything that we need for device. Next thing that we can do is run Rails G device views. I guess I could have used Tailwind device, but I'm gonna to try to use a component for this and style my own sign-in views. So we're speed running. Still gonna do that. And then we're gonna do a Rails G uh, device user. I have user accounts. Then we'll migrate the database with Rails DB migrate. Just like that, restart the server with bin dev. And I'll come back to this hyper UI website and I'm gonna find an auth. Auth forms are right here. Copy this HTML. Go over to device sessions new. Or actually, registration is new because we're going to be signing up. Now I'll drop the component in and I have to replace. <laughs> it is kind of tricky. Like, I'll have to kind of merge this together. Form with, might go around this whole section. Honestly, never done this. This is kind of a pain. It's tricky to do for fast. Where the inputs and labels are. So all I need is the email password and sign up. That is the main. This is the form actually right here. There, I'm going to grab the top part of the form. It's going to be about combining these together. Kind of a pain. I don't even know if we want that. We don't even have, we don't have most of the fields that they have. Kind of funny. Ugh. 
Oh, another option is we could just put, we could use the existing fields. If I drop this form right inside, get rid of the form part. Just use their field. Yeah, let's just leave that actually. Might want this styling. Making it so much harder to speed run when I'm doing a whole off phase. Thing a div down here. Okay, perfect. Now for the input, the name is what we're gonna have to change. Well, the funny thing is we don't have a first name, last name, but we can quickly add it. Users first name. I think that's how it would come through. Last name. Now, so instead of just like using the field widths, we can actually use the HTML just change on it so it comes through, right? Password. Even have the password confirmation. That's how it comes through. Great. So now let's reload. Wait, let's go back here. Let's reload and see. We can't even see anything different. So I have to set the link on that get started today button. So let's go back to pages home. Look for get started today. Trying to add user accounts was such a mistake for this video. Okay, we can go to new user registration path. Okay, boom. Get to the user sign up. We do have these awkward links up here. Might still be rendering something on that. Yeah, it's up here. So I, I'll just delete that for now, I guess. Still have the form with. Swapped out most of the stuff except for the submit button. So I think here is where we would find wherever the button is. Create an account, that giant button. Right now we have two. We have sign up and create an account. So I'm going to turn that. Actually, it should already work as long as it is a button. Which is, uh, If we really wanted to, we could add type submit. Tell it that it really is a button that should submit stuff. Now let's add our name. Create an account. Oh, I forgot a at sign. Oh, email can't be blank. Power what? Password can't be blank. So I think I got the params wrong. Just need to really quickly look. What what parameters does it expect? Oh, it's just a user singular. I don't know why I put it all plural. Anyways, we are going to have to permit those new attributes and we're going to have to add it to the model. So I'm going to do a Rails G migration, add fields to users. Oh, shoot. Yeah, let's do a Rails G. I forgot to add the fields. Rails G, then you have to do space. Right, our fields. So first name, last name. That's really the only thing different. Rails DB migrate. Slash dev again. Now let's see what answers we have. So right here, this is what I usually do. I copy this in and put it in the application folder. Here we can add our new parameters. For us, it's gonna be first name, last name. Now we can come back in here. Our information. Create an account. Oh, always forget the email. It actually worked. Wait, let's check the console. It did. We we're able to get that to work. Now I'm gonna deploy this to production. So the first thing I'm gonna do to deploy it to production is I'm gonna go to GitHub and I'm gonna create a new repository because I don't know how to do it from the CLI. I don't know. Uh, you guys can let me know if you know how to do it. So I'm gonna put the repository name. Speed run. 
and we dab. Fastest development and deploy. Yeah. World record, probably not. I've been taking my time. Now we're gonna take this code right here. We're gonna drop it in. Get add dot dash m. Push. Now we have our code in production. All right. One thing we're gonna need is a secret key base for when we deploy. I'm gonna do a Rails credentials edit dash dash environment production. Create the credential file and inside of it it'll have the secret key base. And we'll check its status. We can see that. Add credential. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the virtual machine that we're gonna host this on. To do that, I'm gonna go to DigitalOcean. That's what I use to create virtual machine. Pretty well for me. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up the Rails one-click installer. That's usually what I use for my Rails apps because it already has Rails installed, droplet. It has Rails and Postgres. Might have to set up SQLite ourselves. Grab the installer. Regular, I'm gonna do the cheapest option, which is $6. It is a $4 option, but for some reason they don't let me do I have to choose a uh, SSH key, my one, my system. And we keep going, create droplet right here. Just like that, we have the droplet created. And once it's done setting up, you're going to SSH into the droplet and clone down our here. I think we have everything done from this side. So now we're ready to go, or actually, I'm going to use the thruster gem. It makes it really easy to expose a local IP. Do that. I guess we can install it globally. App. I'm going to command like this thrust bit server, and you can add the domain use. I actually already have a domain that up. We can have a whole domain working with our Rails app right here. Quickly go over to that domain. The domain I'm going to use. Edit this record. Get rid of that IP. Set my new IP address in. New droplet. Save. Forgot to save. All right. So now I've saved the new IP address. So this will now work when I deploy the app. And what we'll do is we'll go back to that droplet. I exited out of that. And <laughs> right here. So I'm going to access the console. Right inside of here. Good setup. Sometimes it takes a while. There we go. But almost connected. Let me just try it again. I think it's just setting up still. Once that is finished, we're going to add the code. Just spin up the app and it'll look exactly like it lo looks like on development. All right, here we are, we're in the app now. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna su-rails, log into the Rails account, although I didn't really have to. That'll bring me to the right direction, the right directory, and it will get me in the right direction. Then I'm gonna go to GitHub, I'm gonna find that new repository that I created. Run Tailwind. I'm gonna grab the code, not with SSH, because if I use SSH, it'll make me have have a SSH code, so I'm gonna use HTTPS clone. Come in here, we can do git clone. Since it's a public repository, we're not gonna ask for a password. Cool, now we have the app cloned. What I'm gonna do, usually, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're gonna let me just see the in, I can see, kind of a long name. 
And yeah, see, it says required Ruby 3.3, but we don't have Ruby 3. If I do a Ruby dash V, we have 3.0. So the choice that we have is to just, I'm just going to change the gem file to 3.20 because I don't really care that much. And that's the one that's here. So easy as changing that. Then we can do bundle, get the gems installed. Because we're using SQLite, we don't need to create a database or anything. Just let it do the bundle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go edit systemctl file, which will be able to run the server. Or actually, we can just try to run it right inside of here. One thing we're going to need is back into the code. We're going to need to get that credential production. So go to config credentials. You have a production key file. Use that as the Rails master key. Let us run the production server. Just a second to install all of these gems. Should be able to go, like we should be good to go. All right, so now we got all of those gems installed. I'm just gonna try to use this. So I'm gonna do first gem install thruster rails. I think that's what it was called. Thruster gem. Wait, I think it, it might not have been thruster rails. Just thruster. Let's do gem install thruster. Just like that we have thruster. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna copy this command from down here. Let's set the TLS domain to the domain that I have connected to the droplet. And I'm going to do a thrust in slash rail server. Work. Try to start the Rails app. Oh, and we do get errors. There's already one in use. I forgot. They put a default, so we got to do system CTL. Status Rails service. Yeah, see, we already have a real service running. I want to stop that. And eventually, we're going to edit that file. But now, for now, we can go back to back to the Rails account. Oh wait. Oh, I did two rails for some reason. And we're going to run that same thruster command. See why it wouldn't work. But it looks like it's running, which means we can now go and view our app. We take our droplet IP and just do HTTP. Oh, I think the only thing is I might have forgot to turn off force SSL. But oh, we can view it. Run petty migrations. It's working Just like that. I have my rails app working. The only thing is the tailwind assets not there because we pre-compile. I forgot that's a step. So we can just stop our thruster server for a second and let's do a pre-compile. So to pre-compile, we're going to do secret key base. Uh, we're going to do a fake secret key. Although we really don't have to because since I already have the master key. Then I'm going to do rails EMV production, rails assets pre-compile. Now, I don't know if it's important to pass the production environment when you compile. Anyways, now we have compiled assets. If I run the thruster server again, I reload. Simple as that, we have a live Tailwind site. And if I go to the domain, it also up that app. It doesn't. Oh, because we're using HTTPS, as you can see. Oh yeah, and see, we can say cannot render console allowed networks. But I think what's happening is it doesn't like the SSL. We try to use HTTP. It doesn't even let me. So sometimes you got to go in incognito. Try to get it to work. And it did work. What we're going to do is, I guess you do have to add the, the host that it's allowed to 
that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a slight change to our code. Let's go to development. Or not, not development. What am I saying? Production. Uh, RB. I have to add the host. Big host. Let's shovel in our domain that we're going to use. You could also turn off force SSL, although obviously that's not doing it because we're able to access it via the IP. Right? That is, if I do my new change, gem file. Wait, not new gem file. What, am I, what did I do actually? There should have been more. I said the host. Run. Not have that. Maybe I didn't call it speed run. Call it. Oh, awesome app. That was just. Yeah, I was going fast at the beginning. So if I do get status. All right, now it's right. I think I was in the wrong terminal actually, that's what happens. Now if I go back to that virtual machine virtual machine terminal, can I do a git pull? Yes, it worked. Now we have the host set up. If I run my thruster again, it would now work from the domain. Still doesn't it's like the security the HTTPS is set up. Although it should, with the TLS domain command, it should have actually created a certain. I wonder if it's because I'm not root. So if you're not root and you try to run this, it's actually not going to work. So if I exit out, I will be root. And I want to edit the system CTL anyways. But I'm going to restart the console because they show you this helpful command to show you which file you're. Gordon, so we're gonna try to edit that. Slash etc slash slash service. Go in here, and then we don't want the user to be Rails. Actually, we want it to be. So I'm just gonna delete that part. Go to working directory. It is gonna be home slash Rails, but it's gonna be like this one. Which I wonder if we can just do speed wildcard. I don't know if we'll, it will let us. We might have to use. The Speed dash run dash tailwind app. Here we get that right. Speed dash. I think speed dash run dash tailwind app. And this is the command that's going to run to start the server. So if we put an R and right here, like TLS domain, that. There, we should be good. You even want to set up your description. R or is it R? R awesome. I didn't even spell awesome. That's fine. Right quit. Now what we can do is um you have to do like a daemon reload. Load. And system. Yeah, we could do start rails.service. You check the status and see if our service started or not. It did not start, it failed. Oh, we didn't pass any parameters in. Oh, now that I realize we were running development, I never set the production, the Rails environment to production. So what we were doing before wasn't even a real representation. I need to set Rails EMV production, and I need to set Rails master key that production key. Generated console like this. Left domain. I don't know if this is gonna work better. Daemon reload. And it's working. Running. Now if we go back, I think if I try to do it through the IP address, it won't work. It doesn't connect, but if I go through the domain. 
Yes, it works. Now my site is live in production on a domain. We just did that. Now I can go drink my coffee. Now we got the app deployed and my coffee is ready. I can't believe how easy it was to deploy my app to production. And as you can see, it really wasn't too hard. I tried to speed run it, but then doing all the device stuff, which by the way, if I press get started now, we actually get an error, which is not that surprising. There must be, oh, we forgot to migrate the database with Rails DB migrate. So I'll actually fix that right now. So I'm signed into DigitalOcean on this computer too. All I have to do is just go to our resource. I'm going to SSH into the console, just like we were doing before. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to CD into slash home slash rails and then CD into our speed run app. What I wanna do is rails env equals production. I'm gonna do a fake secret key. So secret key base equals one. Rails DB migrate. So it can migrate to database. Yep, that was important. So now if I go back, Tammy Lonas Co. This is the moment of truth. Get started now. We have a sign up page and we should be able to sign up. Did work and we're even getting errors because I didn't have my password confirmation right. Create account, boom! Just like that, I created a new account for the service on our live app. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please press that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon for a new video.